Joining us now, the incoming GOP chair of House Oversight, Luke Uzier, Congressman James Comer. Congressman, it's great to see you again, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. What's your reaction to that story? So Twitter is also censoring U.S. politics and other politicians, but not genocidal dictators in the rest of the world. Yeah, it's more bad news for Twitter. You know, people will argue that Twitter's a private company, so they can do whatever they want. Normally, I would agree with that. but. The problem that Twitter and Facebook has is they, they have special liability protections that other media companies don't have. Now there's evidence that they knew very well what they were doing uh, wasn't based on their own rules and guidelines, and they were essentially uh, censoring conservatives, censoring conservative politicians, and censoring conservative speech. So I think that's going to be a big issue for them in this Republican majority starting in January. They were already under the radar uh, of Congress for big tech reforms, and I think this will probably be the, the final nail in their coffin with respect to uh, uh, getting reforms that are going to probably cost them their liability protection so people can sue them in the future if they ever do anything like this again. Well, that's a big deal. I mean, if they lose their liability shield mm -hmm. from the federal government. Uh, I mean, we have House GOP <clears throat> leader Kevin McCarthy. He's vowing to subpoena the 51, as many as he can, U.S. intelligence agents who claimed without evidence the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian disinformation. You know, the new Twitter files, Congressman, revealed Twitter met with the FBI, Homeland Security, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence on a weekly basis on disinformation. And then likely included the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election. What do you say to all that, Congressman? I'm very concerned about that because this is where we have the government playing an active role in surpassing free speech. That is not what this country was founded on. That's not uh, what the founding fathers envisioned when they created this great democracy and, the, and this, uh, this building where, where we're standing where we have free debate and we abide and take an oath of the Constitution. So uh, this is something that the Oversight Committee is going to be very interested in. Which government employees were involved in suppressing conservative speech? Because when you get to the laptop story, the FBI already had the laptop for a year, Liz, so they knew darn well that everything on that laptop was legitimate. Everything on that laptop uh, was factual. That was Hunter Biden's laptop. The FBI knew that, yet they're going to Twitter and Facebook according to Mark Zuckerberg, and saying, you know, this sure looks like Russian disinformation to me. I'm sure they're going to uh, go in their defense. They're going to say, well, we didn't come out and say that it was Russian disinformation. But what would you do if you were a social media company and the FBI and other government agencies rolled into your office every week and said, oh, that sure looks like Russian disinformation? You're not going to post that story. And that's what happened. And these government officials need to be held accountable because the government should never play a role in suppressing free speech. Well, they put out this narrative before the Senate Homeland Security and Senate Finance Report in 2020, of September that year, that this was Russian disinformation. Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Charles Schumer. Let's, let's watch then White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki in July of last year admit, yeah, the White House was red flagging, quote, problematic posts on social media to censor. Watch. Can you talk a little bit more about this uh, request for tech companies to be more aggressive in policing misinformation? Has the administration been in touch with any of these companies? Sure. Uh, well, first, we are in regular touch uh, with these social media platforms, uh, and those uh, engagements typically happen through members of our senior staff, but also members of our COVID-19 team. Uh, given, as Dr. Murth Murthy uh, conveyed, uh, this is a big issue of misinformation, specifically on the pandemic. In terms of action Alex, that uh, we have taken or we're working to take, I should say, from the federal government. Uh, we've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. Well, that's Elon Musk is now saying the next round of Twitter bombshells would be about censorship. You know, we have Elon mm -hmm. Musk saying, wait a second, Twitter just fell down on the job in stopping child exploitation on Twitter as they're focusing on everything else. You know, this is another black eye for the Biden administration. They were using our tax dollars to create these disinformation boards and these disinformation czars that were telling social media companies, and we know mainstream media companies, what they can print and what they can't print. Uh, this is wrong, it's unconstitutional, and they need to be held accountable. Well, the thing is, Pew Research says nine and 10 say social media control the news and that they get their news from a smartphone. 
you know, most of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Musk had not bought Twitter, this would still be happening. But Twitter um, would still be denying their censorship. They were blaming it on the algorithms when it was Twitter officials doing it. And now that it's exposed, they want you to believe the practice was understood, the story is a nothing burger, a non-revelation. Your final word. Well, God bless Elon Musk. He's righting a wrong. Uh, I always felt like the best solution to Twitter and Facebook would be a private sector solution. We see that with Elon Musk coming in and, and trying to bring transparency and right a wrong at Twitter. Got it. Congressman Comer, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Happy holidays. Thanks for joining us again. We'll stay on the story.